Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia. This is section 3.2. Students commit to section 3.2 knowing how to find the slope of a secant line and the slope of a tangent line. But now it's important we show them why we want to know when those two might be equal. And that brings us to the mean value theorem. So the essential question we would like students to be able to answer at the end of section 3.2 is what is the mean value theorem and how is it used? So the first thing that we can look at is that we'll be able to address here mathematical practice 3C. Confirm whether hypotheses or conditions of a selected definition, theorem, or test have been satisfied. So we want to highlight the two necessary conditions for the mean value theorem to even apply. Number one, function must be continuous on a closed interval, A to B, and differentiable on an open interval, A to B. Now if need be, we can look at figure 3.9 for a case when it's not differentiable in the middle of an interval. This does a good job visually of showing students what to look for. From here, we might go to example three. And in example three, it's best to maybe extend the concept a little bit and ask students, okay, now that we've tackled this example, what would happen if we extend the interval to let's say the closed interval negative one to four? After extending example three, we can go to example four. And the great thing about example four is it's got some real life basis behind it. Let me give you an analogy. Let's suppose that I'm driving on the highway and I clock in at a toll booth at 10 a.m. So I go along the way and then I check into another toll booth at 11 a.m. Now, what should happen there? I've covered one hour of time, so logically you would think, well, uh, how far away was one toll booth from the other? Well, if the speed limit was 55 miles an hour, and those toll booths were a little bit more than 55 miles away, we're okay. But if those toll booths were, let's say, 75 miles away, and it only took me an hour, then what we can, we can conclude from this is that I must have been speeding. I must have been exceeding that 55 mile an hour limit. Now, to wrap up the section, what might be nice at this point is to try and call in some things that we've seen in other sections. So yes, we want our students to be able to articulate the mean value theorem. But how about we also ask them when the intermediate value theorem comes into play. And we can use a free response type of question to do this. Speaking of AP type things, let's look at the language that students might have to recognize on an AP type question. They may see something that says, tell me when the instantaneous velocity is the same as the average velocity. Or maybe even more conceptual and abstract, prove that there must be a value k in between a and b such that f prime of k is equal to a certain number. This particular phrasing really throws students off because it's difficult to get their heads around. But what we want to do is reassure students that this is just another way of expressing that there must be a place where the slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line to occur. I hope these tips have been helpful, and I'm sure you'll have much success in section 3.2.